discussed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink Television, its sponsors, or partners. Welcome back to the uh, Straight Goods, the Enviro Show. I'm your host, John Abadi. Uh, we have guests uh, dealing with the Merit Times Green Bird Atlas. Uh, we have Dr. Andrew Andy Horn and uh, Dr. Carol Ellard. Um, and they're going to be discussing the Maritimes Breeding Bird Atlas and how people can get involved and what it's all about and why we have such a thing. So um, I don't know who wants to take the lead on this, but um, I guess we'll just, you know, what uh, what is the Atlas, first of all? Well, the Atlas is uh, basically all of uh, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and PEI are divided into about 1,600 squares. They're about 10 by 10 kilometers each. And people go out and they um, uh, just determine what birds are breeding in those squares. And the neat thing about it is it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, citizen science projects in this whole region. And citizen science is where ordinary type of folks like us go out and, um, and uh, collect data that can be used in a, in a scientifically designed design way. So basically anybody that's into birds, anybody who's interested in birds, anybody who's curious about uh, what kind of birds might be around their home or whatever, uh, can participate in this. And, um, and uh, most of the birders, I think, in the Maritimes will, will end up uh, end up taking part. Absolutely. It's a, it's a lot of fun. The, the, the great thing is that it's, it's, a, it's a way to get people outside and it motivates people to do things that they, they might do on their own, but this is, gives them a reason, a noble cause to, to get out there and do things that they enjoy doing anyway. But to get back to the atlas thing, and an atlas, most people see here of an atlas, think of maps and where things are. Well, this is an atlas of birds, so it's maps and where the birds are. And uh, people have often leafed through bird books, distribution, you know, eastern birds, uh, etc. And they find these little maps with a map of North America or eastern North America, and they say, oh, look, this bird occurs here. These maps, they come from somewhere, and they come from projects like these. What we're doing is, is in fact, a higher resolution map for the Maritimes uh, to assess the distribution of all the birds, um, all the bird species that nest within the Maritimes. Um, so we'll end up with very detailed maps. But most importantly, is this is not the first time it's done. This is the second installment of the Maritimes Breeding Bird Atlas. Um, the first installment occurred between 1986 and 1990, so we have a baseline. And now what we're going to do is we want to repeat the whole process and come up with these maps, and then we'll be able to make comparisons. Because you probably can come up with a list of birds that you're familiar with now, you probably would have uh, said were quite rare or, or uh, it's much less common 20 years ago. We can probably come up with a long list of species just right now, but it's going to be really interesting to see how these maps, in certain cases, might have changed. That atlas there, you said 86 to 90. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, now we're doing the new one, which was it 2000? When did it start? 2006. That's right. Yeah. So 2006 is when it started. That's right. Yeah. And it goes till 3000. Right. 2000, 2010. 2010. Yeah, yeah. 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 So 2010. The data from that one isn't going to be incorporated with the data from the new one. They're going to be totally it's, separate maps. It's all part. It's in fact, it's all part of the same project. Mm -hmm. um, these things are long time series. Once we get started, we want to keep it going. So hopefully, you know, our kids' kids will be doing this, you know, 40 years from now. Um, and if you go to the website, and it's important to mention that the the website because the project. Uh, the, the, the best interface with the public is this website. And if you go to the website, you can very quickly see the data from the first atlas. So you can make comparisons as the project evolves. You can see what the maps were uh, 20 years ago. You can see how the maps are evolving with this project. And we're just starting our second year now. Um, but things are, things are evolving quite quickly. That's a, yeah, that's the one, if we get one message across in this little... Uh, program. It's uh, anybody into birds, you know, if you're watching it to feeder, if you talk about them, if you're kind of curious about them, or if you're a, you know, hardcore birder that goes out and identifies everything. It doesn't matter what your level of expertise, you should check out this website. And you can find it if you uh, Google Maritime Bird Atlas or Maritime Bird Atlas, um, the first link that gives you will be the, the atlas. 
and there's a there's a map on the side of that page. You click on the map, and then you can do all sorts of cool stuff with this interactive map that shows up. You can pull down, uh, uh, take the uh, pull down menu, and ask for the total number of hours that people have gone out for each of these squares, and uh, ask it to display that. And it'll show you all these squares across the Maritimes and how much effort people have put into each square. So you can check out your your square. And what we did uh, just a few minutes ago, it's just online now, we just, we just went upstairs in your studios and did this. You can click on a square and boom, there'll be a list of breeding bird species. So say you live uh, wherever, somewhere in Guysburg County, you click on click on the square that's right near your home and you'll see whether there's any species. And if nothing's displayed and nobody's uh, covered that that square, you're on. You, you have a great <laughs> chance to contribute. I mean, you don't need to be able to identify the lesser spotted flea bane or whatever uh, to participate. If you can, you know, you can, with a little work, distinguish a chickadee from a crow and so on and just follow them around and see what they're up to. Yeah. Then so you, you click on the square to play all the species that have uh, been that's right. Breeding and I suppose yeah. what, what if we can yeah. perhaps show this this little map here. It's it's um it's a printed copy, but this is very much the map that you see when you get to that website. You click there, and um and you'll see it's made up of all these little squares. But each of those squares is a ten kilometer by ten kilometer square. Um so but you can just li literally drift over the map and the the square. Designations are the names of the squares, so they, they're each uniquely identified. Will come up, and you click on that square, and as Eddie said, you come up with a list of the species that have been recorded to date, and um, and you might see that in your square, song sparrow um, has been observed, but nobody has seen any breeding evidence. But you know that there's a song sparrow nesting in your backyard, and you can say, well, heck, I, I, I can increase our level of knowledge. Um, about this species in this square simply by participating in the project and submitting this record. Mm -hmm. I have a song sparrow nesting in my yard. And who knows what else might be nesting in your yard. You're the best to know. Yeah. And that's why we want to draw on volunteer participation because often volunteers are the people that know their backyards the best. Yeah. And uh, they can navigate them quickly. They know where their little special habitats are. They might have a little wetland and, and, and out behind that row of trees, etc., by the river. The more eyes in the field, the better. Exactly. Right. Everyone can't get everything. And if it's, again, a, a, an excuse to get families together, to get people out there and just on a stroll on a, on a June morning or, or even into July, I mean, it's, you see birds carrying food, birds with young, birds carrying nesting material. This is all the type of evidence. Yeah, so or, for, for, yeah to identify, because, I mean, you know, birders and, and the like would know how to identify what to look for as Joe Public. Yeah. What would I do? How would I know a bird's breeding? Well, it's, that's a perfect question. And, and, and everybody starts out at that level. Everybody starts out, well, how do we confirm these things? Even as, as researchers, we have to come up with categories and rules. There are rules to these games, and we have to play by the rules. If we want the project to work properly, and if we want to be able to, uh, to gain as much as we want um, out of the project. So these rules or these, these breeding categories, we basically have uh, confirmation of breeding or probable breeding or, or possible breeding or simply observation. And all of these have very, very clear definitions. And the definitions are available on the website and they're available throughout the material that's provided to volunteers. It's all free. It doesn't cost anything. It's pretty simple. If, you know, if, if, a, if a crow's calling regularly at a particular place or a, or a chickadee skimming its, you know, sort of spring song, beep, 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 and you notice that a couple of weeks apart, then that suggests there's a territorial male or something. So that's one level of breeding evidence and that's listed as a possible, I think. Yeah. And, uh, but if you see the chickadee carrying food, um, then that means it's confirmed. It's got to be carrying or nesting food material. Oh, what about nesting or, material? That's or that's nesting material. Well, nesting that's material. Absolutely. Probably. We probably probably or something. Yeah. It's important to, uh, to not assume these, these categories and assume it's important to go into the website, look at the materials, read them carefully, understand them. But it's, it's not difficult. And very quickly, somebody can go for with, from no knowledge to a lot of knowledge. So quickly it would be, so if you see, um, well, if you hear a bird doing mating call or whatever, a call, uh, if you see them carrying any kind of nesting material, mm -hmm. uh, possibly any food, yeah. or definitely if you find a nest. But if someone does find a nest, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, 
We don't want them. We don't want problems arising. We don't want people going in rummaging through digging through no. all their six no. eggs or something. Yeah. It's um, not necessary. No. You know, we can get a confirmation just from seeing the birds. Yeah, you just want confirmation. That's all we want. To know data on how many eggs are surviving Absolutely. or anything like that. That can, another project kicks in then mm -hmm. if, if people are, are finding nests and more information on the maritime nest record scheme can be found. Um, as a link in our website, on our website. Um, but that's another level of complexity. So uh, I think for, for most atlasers, they're not, they're not going to be doing that. Some might be keen, and those that are keen will, will find the information that they need. But by and large, no, we don't, we don't want to be, as you said, we don't want to be disturbing birds, uh, nesting. Um, we just want to get those confirmations, because really that's what we want. We want confirmation of as many species um, in, in across all these squares in the Maritimes as possible. Okay. Uh, one neat thing about this this project is that is that it starts out very simply. You know, it's just people going out and seeing what's what's out there. Um, but then what what that data is used for is that say somebody wants to put up a wind farm or wants to expand a mine or something like that. The people that are engaged in the environmental assessment of that project want to check out what sort of rare species there might be nesting around there, they can just go to this Atlas website. And uh, again, you can, you can go there yourself and sort of play around with it. You can pull down the menu for Bicknell thrush, a very rare bird, or at least better than another rare one, and see where they're breeding across the Maritimes. So it can be used for these kinds of assessments of where rare species are breeding, used to decide where good areas might be for conservation areas and so on. So it's a real environmental uh, environmental so, project too. And, um, is there a cost to go on the website or anything? No, nope. none whatsoever. Down. Absolutely. Free. It's supported, the, the whole project is supported by a lot of uh, uh, various um, cobbled together uh, government grants and also some, uh, some uh, private corporations. It's a really nice collaborative initiative. You have the federal government, provincial governments, um, the private industry is involved as well. Um, and, and most importantly, uh, a huge number, over 550 individual volunteers participated last year, and that number is going to rise for sure. Um, so it's, it's people giving their time and uh, supporting the project. We're always looking for additional support on the part of industry, private, the private sector especially. You're allowed to, um, on the website, that's where you do the input of data, if you have any data? Yeah, all, everything is done via the website. Um, but for those that don't have computers, we don't want to be exclusive. It's still possible to submit uh, observations and, and nest records. Yeah, so. Is there a phone number? Oh, yes, there is. We have a, a, a the Atlas hotline is one eight six six five Atlas five. Um, so it's toll free from anywhere anywhere in North America. So even if you're traveling in California, you can still talk to the Atlas coordinator and get some information. Okay. Um, is there anything you'd like to cover? Is there any concerns over certain species? I've got a minute left to wrap up. Is there? I, I think if we had a minute left to wrap up, uh, any birder should check it out. Check out the, the website. I would say just show to the website. Very cool. Yeah. And it's wonderful. Right. It's available in both languages. You can switch from English to French just with the click of a button. With the, once you generate these maps, you can click from the, the first atlas to the present atlas with the click of a button. It's Google Breeding, Maritimes Breeding Atlas. Yeah, it's www.mba-aom.ca. So I would just say go to the website, get information, uh, call that 1-800 number. Um, if, uh, if you want to, to talk with somebody, and uh, take it from there. Okay, well, thank you, uh, gentlemen. Dr. Horn and Dr. Ellert for coming out and sharing this information with us. Hopefully people get to take part and the more eyes in the field, the more data we can get and protect some key areas for the maritime. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having us. Thanks.